So hello everyone, we are starting our webinar, so welcome and thank you all for joining today. Uh, my name is Olena Grinyuk and I'm Regional Manager for the Central uh, Eastern Europe at the SME Banking Club and I will be your host today. And today we will speak about digitalization beyond the slogans, so how from the banking perspective uh, this digitalization in crisis times looks like and how banks can cope and thrive. And I'm very glad to be joined today by three speakers, so let me introduce them. Piotr Filipiak, Business Solution Consultant at Comarch. Uh, Adam Varendziewski, Global SME and Mid-Corporate Digital Platform Center Director at Andy Bank Shlonsky. And Mark Libitsky, Head of Group IT Strategy and Solutions at Raiffeisen Bank International. Hello and thank you very much for joining today. Hi, hello. Hello. So before we start, let me quickly mention some organizational moments. So our webinar is scheduled for half an hour, uh, but we are ready to stay here till the, we answer the very last question you send us. So please don't hesitate to tap your questions into the chat. Uh, the format of today's webinar is a panel discussion. So I have prepared some questions to our panelists. And after that, we will be ready to answer your questions as well. And we are recording this webinar, so right after we finish, you will receive the link to the video. So let's go to the topic. Uh, I will start the discussion with a broad question to the whole panel. So um, the virus changed attitudes to the digital tools very quickly, and we were enforced to the digitalization both in our private lives and job functions. So my question is, um, how exactly crisis affects customer behavior in the financial sector? So which percentage of your customers switched to the digital channels? Uh, because if you look back at the beginning of this year, banks targeted in their digital strategies like to have on average 30 or 40% of the customers in the digital channels. And now probably this percentage is, is close to 90 or even 100%. So are banks ready and what are the challenges and opportunities you see here? So, Adam, shall we start with you? Yes, of course. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, so, basically, we see how the customers' behavior changed a lot during last uh, month, last uh, few weeks after this uh, epidemic came up. Uh, in Poland uh, rapidly. We are, as an ING Bank we are in a quite good position looking from services we offer to our customers because our digital transformation journey started uh, over 10 years, uh, 10 years ago. Uh, we from, from time to time, from, from year to year, from month to month, we delivered a lot of digital capabilities to our SME Midcorp customers. Uh, and before epidemic, um, epidemic came, um, a lot of our customers were digital and a lot of our processes, products were served nearly 100% digitally or, or majority of, uh, of this percentage was, uh, was digitally covered. Uh, let's start, of course, these basic cash management functions like uh, transfers, uh, statements, etc. This is 100% digital. But if we take a look, for example, of for a new letter of credit, new guarantee, uh, even loans, there were the, this number of digital uh, digital transferring data from bank to customer were really really high, around sixty or even ninety percent. Uh, this this was before epidemic uh, situation, uh, before COVID came uh, came to us, and right now we see that uh, say more and more customers are willing to use those capabilities. So they had these capabilities before epidemic came out, uh, but they didn't use it because, this, uh, because they, they, they didn't think that they, they will need that or, or they prefer to use a still standard human to human channel, for example. And we see right now that customers really, really appreciate what we offer them uh, uh, and, and, and what they can deal from their homes, basically without using uh, without uh, going to branches to bank branches or without uh, without going to to to, to meet real person uh, so we see that this say migration to digital really really uh, is um, uh, is is bigger than uh, than before 
before that was driven mostly from party from customers, party from banks, party from, from our side as well, of course. And right now we see uh, more and more pressure from uh, from customers. They they want to use this channel. They appreciate that what they already have. They want to use it uh, it even more. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. And Maro, how the situation looks like in uh, RBI? Yeah. So definitely adding to the uh, point with uh, which uh, Adam have mentioned, I also uh, I'm quite sure that you know the capabilities are there, meaning the uh, development of the internet banking, mobile banking, all the digital banking uh, suit was very much established over the last um, uh, number of uh, years. And looking from this perspective, this um, adoption was very much also drive um, uh, driven by the by the banks uh, themselves. Uh, but looking from the perspective, if we are capable, yes, we are looking from the also RBI group, but I think also as a kind of as a industry, we are capable to deliver not only this basic uh, banking needs, but also to serve much more, uh, let's say, advanced needs of um, our clients. Obviously, this pandemic situation have, I would say, speed up a lot of uh, developments, a lot of discussions. And also, as we used to rely on the traditional channels in the past, now we need to add a kind of digital flavor also uh, into them uh, in the format of the digital advisory or the remote access to the physical advisor of the, um, of the clients. And definitely, we are, we are working on it. And here we are, I, I, I believe, quite quickly catching up. Looking from the client's behaviors, because I think this is the second uh, point, Obviously, the clients are now much more, I would say, forced uh, to use the digital, which is also a chance. I think the chance for the adoption and the chance to stay with this channel for the longer run. And also, we need to be aware, I think this is this is at least um, my hypothesis, that a lot of new behaviors which are dri driven by this uh, uh, pandemic situation will actually stay with us um, long term, maybe forever. So looking from this perspective, a lot of investments we are, which are still to come in terms of the digital advisory, more complex processes, more complex solutions, also e-authentication, e-authorization, also all the e-signatures uh, from this perspective are a kind of no regret investments which um, uh, the banks need to, uh, let's say, undertake in order to self serve this new reality. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, do you see actually do you see any difference in the customer behavior in uh, different countries where you have network banks, or this is the, the same? Yeah. So this is this is quite a in, interesting uh, question. Thanks for it. So we have the banks in on, on thirteen markets, and these markets are different different from the size, different from the characteristics of the population, and also. In a lot of banking um, uh, behaviors, we see a kind of particularities uh, on a kind of daily basis. But this particular situation, I would say they are, this is global, meaning this is very much influencing each and every market where we are and also each and every bank. And I would say influencing in a very similar extent and similar way. So the client's behaviors are also uh, are also the same. Looking from the opportunity which it brings, I think this is also bringing opportunity to really standardize certain solutions and answer in a very consistent way for us as a banking group, no matter on which 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 market we face the challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Marek. And Piotr, um, how do you see the perspective at that moment, and what are the opportunities and areas of potential growth for the banks you see right now? Thank you for the question. So, first of all, crisis already hit branches massively. And the good thing is that customers found out that, that they don't need to go to branch anymore because most services are available online. So, on the one hand, it's an advantage for banks because branches generate huge costs. But on the other hand, branches were responsible for selling or cross-selling loans and acquisition of new clients. But regarding potential to grow, in my opinion, banks will be forced to look for new income sources. Uh, experts are forecasting lower financial results in 2020. And from the first data from March, it seems that banks had a significant drop up to 50% in the value of new loans. In some cases, finding a new business will be crucial for survival. And one of possible answers is e-commerce because from the first analysis, it seems that e-commerce is massively growing 
through the from the pandemic and people are spending their money in e-shops instead of shopping malls and e-shops have a significant increase in the number of new customers so some of them will stay with e-shops after the pandemic and banks still has a space to grow there because they can offer financing to the buyers or uh, propose payment services to sellers thank you Yes, this was actually today was I saw uh, the news uh, actually from ING Bank in Poland that the bank is helping the SME customers to uh, uh, open e-shops uh, and with uh, with the help of payment gate uh, eMoyer. So uh, this is one actually the, the direction now, you know, to bring the physical shops to online and actually one of the sources uh, of the revenues. And Petr, maybe the next question I will address firstly to you. So yes, as, uh, switching to the remote work right now is the only way to ensure uh, business continuity and for the bigger number of the sectors and banking as well, of course. And time to market of digital solutions is, became crucial. So how can banks uh, accelerate the cooperation with uh, IT vendors? And here, where do you see a space for disruptive technologies that will help banks now? Right. So, firstly, all of us needed to become digital nearly overnight, and it applied uh, both to banks and to IT vendors. So, nowadays, it's very important for vendors to maintain projects with banks 100% remotely, without any presence on site, but keeping the same efficiency. And regarding time to market, in the present situation, while branches are closed, uh, like Adam and Marek uh, has mentioned 100 features, 100% uh, of the features need to be accessible through digital channels. So no one was fully prepared for the crisis. One bank uh, had better preparation than the other, but uh, that's why time to market is more important than it was right now. And regarding IT technology, uh, disruptive IT technology, sometimes it's faster to deploy a new functionality developed in-house by the bank or just add an existing module from the third party vendor. And this is why an open solution has an advantage. Adding or removing modules from the platform should be as easy as downloading the app from the app store or installing a new software on the computer. And we shouldn't forget about call centers because they are also under the huge pressure. More clients than usual try to reach the bank through the phone Therefore, consultants should use the software which helps them to be really efficient, like video chats. And in the same time, banks shouldn't forget about security. Uh, authentication of the new customer in the times of pan pandemic is the, can be the biggest challenge because many banks were using couriers for signing contracts with new clients. And now this process is unavailable due to, due to the COVID situation. And the answer is fully digital onboarding, including know your customer. Uh, it can be the most anticipated product on the market right now. And in this case, time to market really matters. Thank you. Yes, yes, agree. And maybe at once, what is the average um, term that you can implement uh, some solutions with the banks? Could you bring here some, some examples? Yes, thank you for this question. It's very important. Of course, there is no answer for that. Uh, no one answer because it depends on the project. Uh, one project may require customizations or integration and the second one may not. But uh, we have a recent fresh case study from one of our clients. And uh, it is that within two weeks, we have deployed in bank features which helps companies to get anti-crisis government subsidiaries in Poland. And this is a good example for fast time to market in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, Marek, and how do you accelerate the cooperation with IT vendors now? Has some focus changed from the beginning of the crisis? And what are maybe the vendor services that you would label as essential right now? So, looking from this perspective, I think the focus remains the same as it was um, uh, before. 
So there is kind of evergreen topic of the of the integration, which um, already Piotr have uh, mentioned. And I think the integration and building the sufficient integration layers was important uh, before, but it's even more important in the uh, uh, current days where we have a need to really promptly introduce to the markets the new solutions or the uh, or the new features. So looking from this perspective, I think this is still uh, remain the focus, but obviously we are even even more, let's say, uh, concentrated um, uh, on this uh, topic. Definitely what helps also uh, is, um, I would say, the migration of the solution and the infrastructure and the, and the portfolio of the solutions into the cloud. So if we are able to deploy the uh, cloud solution, it usually also uh, makes the whole implementation uh, much uh, quicker. In order to address both um, topics, we as uh, RBI have created a, a kind of integration layer for the entire group. So whatever we can bring into this integration layer dramatically shorten the, the time for the, let's say, accessibility for from the network banks. And I think this is one of the answers we can now we can have to this uh, situation. And I would not uh, forget about the one um, another point, which is also agile way of working because we are working in Agile uh, internally, but if we also cooperate with the vendor and the vendor is able to work with us in the same manner, I think it's also very much speeding up uh, in terms of the cooperation on the implementation. Yes, thank you. And Adam, would you comment on this question? Yes, of course, I just need to turn on the microphone. <laughs> uh, yes, of course, I, I agree with Marek and, uh, and, and, and Piotr uh, regarding, um, uh, regarding, let's say, uh, preferable or, let's say, the biggest challenges right now that we are having. The first two weeks, uh, first, uh, first few weeks after this epidemic came out, we were, say, struggling with our infrastructure and we we're trying to uh, put uh, uh, nearly 100% from central offices, from IT, uh, from ops uh, and call centers as well, uh, like uh, Piotr mentioned, to uh, to to, to uh, say to, to new situation and to be sure that our infrastructure, internal infrastructure, uh, will cover the most important topics. Right now, we are in the phase uh, that we are trying to uh, speed up some basic processes. We are trying to get back or or, or even speed up standard um, standard way of de delivering stuff. Uh, and yet we are searching new opportunities uh, as well uh, regarding new um, with new um, applications or with new models with external vendors and internally as well like video verification uh, out of bound authentication uh, chat uh, chats video chats etc this kind of stuff that was uh, maybe not crucial a few time a few months ago but right now it begins to be crucial in current situation mm -hmm. yeah, thanks yeah thanks well my next uh, question so i will uh, ask one more question then we will start reading questions from our attendees so my next question is also to all the panel uh, uh, regarding the home office that we also wanted to discuss this so uh, the question maybe we'll start from adam uh, uh, what percentage of your banks employees is working remotely uh, right now and how do you think will this solution of remote work will remain uh, when the quarantine finishes because you know uh, there are now some of predictions and then one of them is for example i read recently like cognizant report and they predict our life like which it uh, which will be like uh, five years after the virus so and the prediction uh, is that on the aftermath of the pandemic that homes will become a place where we can really self-isolate and concentrate and stay connected with the world and that the homes, new homes will be built or rebuilt with the dedicated home office space, with the routers in the right place, with the special wall screens, with soundproofing systems, etc. So how do you see this? How do you see, oh. what do you think of that? <laughs> It, it will be really, really nice that we uh, everyone will help. Uh, we will have this uh, specific space, but it is uh, dedicated for for uh, for work. Hopefully, uh, every everyone can afford that. Uh, we will see what, how with the crisis situation will uh, will happen. Will end uh, right now. Uh, 
nearly 100% of people from uh, from central office are working from their homes. Uh, only part of the people that is um, uh, that is responsible for IT infrastructure, for managing IT infrastructure, they basically need to uh, be um, uh, sometimes in their offices. Uh, and around 60% of people from branches uh, are working remotely as well. They've, they've got rotation as well, and they all the security mechanisms uh, that are covering uh, their, their safety and uh, our customers' safety. Uh, but majority of, uh, of our employees are working currently uh, from home. How do I, what's, how would I find, how would I think about this situation? Uh, let's say this is challenging right now. Uh, let's say mostly from the perspective of cooperation and collaboration uh, between people working uh, closely together in the day, on a daily basis. Uh, I am responsible for the, for development of digital platforms for SME Midcore customers. I've got several squads that are working closely together uh, on uh, digital capabilities for our customers. And I see that uh, say sometimes it was uh, better, a little bit better, maybe better uh, situation regarding collaboration, constant, uh, constant exchange of knowledge between uh, squads, between people inside the squads before epidemic situation when they are uh, sitting together uh, around one table than previously. So we need to find ourselves in, the, in this new situation. We need to find the way, we need to find communication, uh, say, uh, the schemas, we need to find the right tools to provide uh, this, um, uh, this uh, let's say, the best possible way to de develop stuff for our uh, customers. And But I think personally that uh, this, maybe not epidemic, hopefully not coronavirus, but uh, let's say more people, more and more people will be trying to uh, to work from home, or will be pushed to to to, to work from home, uh, say by the situation or by even cost saving aspect. That uh, let's let's be honest, this is also um, some, some some additional some additional point uh, to cover. It is because uh, we as an institution we are we are saving costs regarding office spaces, water, utilities, etc. So I think more and more people will be uh, will be working from home. Maybe before epidemic, I, I read some analysis that it was around five percent of people in Poland are working from time to time from home. And I think it will be more and more uh, after this. Uh, hopefully, coronavirus uh, will be dead. We will see. Uh, or, or, or yeah. So so I think around 20, 30 percent will be constantly working uh, uh, from home. And, we must find the, the way to 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 do to be as much as, as effective as uh, as possible in this in this new in this new situation for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Marek. What is what is your view on that? Yeah, so so I can also share that that uh, similarly to, to 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 what Adam have said in in our organization also. A vast majority of um, employees are working remotely, working from home. So I think from this perspective, definitely that, that the group IT have done a great job in order to enable this. I mean, both on the head office, but also all the network banks uh, uh, level and obviously all the functions which are required for the continuity and security of the operations um, uh, are working from the office. But nevertheless, the, like I said, majority of the organization is, uh, is uh, remote. And second, this new situation, um, uh, proof that this remote work uh, is, is nothing out of the worry. Uh, I mean, the productivity, the engagement, the collaboration are, are really good, obviously. Like also Adam have mentioned, there were several, let's say, things which always work best when, when you can meet with someone physically, have a kind of uh, touch point, but obviously with the tools which we have for the remote collaboration, I think it's not that much of the issue as this would be even a couple of years um, ago. And looking from the like the projection for the future, I think there are like two drivers. First is this kind of new normal, I would say paradigm. Uh, so all the social distancing, all these new requirements, which we will need to embed as organizations into our offices into uh, to secure the um, uh, employees, to secure the kind of um, good work um, uh, environment. And I think this is still a kind of new challenge which we need to face and define how we will uh, tackle it. But definitely it will drive um, uh, the remote work or home office work for at least um, some part of the people. And second is obviously 
also the kind of new ideas or the new normal for our employees because even if the past like like it was mentioned maybe for five percent was working remotely this was still a kind of test or still kind of laboratory environment now when for the massive um, amount of people working from home can prove that this work can be equally efficient then there is no argument not to continue on a much broader scale so i think this too let's say drivers are very much impacting how it will uh, look in the end. And to be honest, so far, especially in this very first weeks of, um, of uh, pandemic situation, we've been more like reacting to it. So whatever we were doing was more, was more like a reaction to the circumstances which were coming to us from the outside. And already now, I think it's also a good moment to have a more strategic thinking into what will be this new normal and how this impacts and how this, let's say, drives the definition of the new target operating models for the number of uh, functions, for the number of processes which we have uh, in the past. And as coming to this very first point, which we have, the digitization is really uh, now speeding up, I think we will have a good answer um, uh, quite soon. So looking from this perspective, let's say few drivers, but, but obviously this home office or remote work uh, will definitely continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And Piotr, how the situation looks like in Comarch? And the second, my question here, what are the solutions that Comarch can provide to the banks to make the remote work productive? Thank you. So, first of all, uh, we also needed to switch to, to home office. And since our company is more than 6,000 people and we have offices across the world, it was a, a it was really tough but we did it and interesting fact is that we have used only our software to perform it and it was the best possible experience with our software for us and since i'm working for the technology company i need to mention about technology so security was the biggest challenge and every bank had a vpn for its employees before the before the covid but the network wasn't ready to maintain 90% of employees working through the VPN in the same time in parallel. So uh, it, was, it was the biggest challenge to provide to banks and to, to provide for ourselves VPNs that will maintain such a number of employees. And uh, regarding the, the landscape after the COVID, it's possible that offices won't look the same way after the pandemic and probably more people will work from home as it saves time and costs of transportation for example and companies will also save money and banks also save money on expensive offices spaces so from the perspective of it vendor it's crucial to deliver safe tools like vpns or video chats that support employees and customers and guarantees efficiency of the of their work Yes, thank you. Actually, the security is one of the main topic and questions that I was uh, receiving from different our you know webinars and and from and from bankers from different countries. So this is actually the main focus and the main question now with the widening and spreading digitalization. So I will start reading the questions because we have some and probably now I will combine uh, several questions in one to let everybody answer them. So uh, are any of the banks focusing on purely digital product? This was the first question and I will it will combine with the question, are banks considering more the adoption of open banking? So Adam, shall we start with you? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, of course. So there, there are, of course, banks uh, that are strongly or, or para banks or let's say challenging banks that are focusing only on the digital capabilities, uh, whatever you can call, but whatever whatever you can you can find. But for example, Revolut is, can be considered as a, as a bank. They're under, under banking license. So Revolut is focusing, of course. Uh, only, for example, for uh, only for uh, digital capabilities, and there are uh, many of that N26, etc., etc. So there are many companies, uh, banks, para banks, startup, f f fintechs, whatever we call it, that are focusing on the digital capabilities. 
and I see there are many banks, specifically in Poland, uh, for example, that are focusing on a digital uh, right now, not only for uh, retail customers, but as well for SME mid-corps uh, also. So we, we as ING Bank Śląski, we put a lot, a lot of uh, investments uh, uh, from last uh, 20, uh, 15 years, let's say, on, be on building digital capabilities. Uh, and um, parallelly with our um, standard way of uh, of delivery of selling uh, servicing clients that is uh, based on the branches uh, we were investing a lot and, and building a lot of digital capabilities on the last uh, 15 years so i think we can be as well considered as one of the banks that are focusing on the, on the delivering di digital capabilities uh, for our customers and regarding second question what was that, what was what that about it about, was about uh, open banking yeah, about op open banking. So PSD2 is here. PSD2 works from uh, some time for half a year. Uh, and to be honest, uh, I don't know still how this epidemic COVID situation will be can be say connected with open banking. But I'm sure that open banking, regardless epidemic, with regardless COVID situation will be a thing, uh, maybe not, not, not now, maybe not in one year, but in few years uh for sure so but it needs uh, a good a good case basically so it's not open banking that will be implemented as as a thing as open banking itself is not a thing specific situations that serve our customers in delivery of the value chains will be a thing uh, so maybe in this new epidemic maybe in this new pandemic situation uh, open banking will help banks, fintech, startups, whatever we call it, uh, with usage of open banking to, uh, to, to, to build digital capabilities, to build digital new way of, uh, of building better, maybe not so impacted by COVID situation, uh, by COVID um, epidemic uh, to, 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 to our customers. So this is, mm -hmm. let's say, more, more like uh, not uh, itself, but more like a tool to uh, to deliver uh, deliver to, 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 to deliver value. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And I actually will comment that ING Bank in Poland was one of the first to implement the account aggregation for the individual and entrepreneurs. True. Uh, so one of the first uh, using this open banking uh, solutions. Let's True. say. Yes, and Marek, what is uh, what uh, what would you comment on on, on this? So the digital uh, products, purely digital products, and open banking solutions in the group. Yeah. So if, if the question is, uh, are the banks uh, investing uh, into this category, and if this um, uh, pandemic situation is, let's say, speeding up or or even more focusing this investment, the short answer is yes, definitely. Uh, the longer answer would be that uh, obviously we were investing into this uh, also before uh, since the, uh, I would say the whole digitization is number one investment of not only for the uh, RBI, but again, I can I can speak about the figures from the entire sector. So this haven't changed. And obviously we not only build or we not only modernized what we have as a kind of legacy business, legacy solutions, but we are also being, building completely new things which we also built in a kind of digital native um, uh, way or digital na native environment. So looking from this perspective, uh, like I said, I see a big benefit of having them. And uh, I can tell also that where we have the end-to-end -end, uh, client onboarding, end-to-end -end account opening, end-to-end -end, um, uh, digital lending also for the new to bank clients, these process are being used. And during this pandemic situation, they are used even more with the, with the let's say, higher uh, numbers than it was ever uh, before, but uh, this whole situation only, how to say, um, strengthen our thinking that this is the right direction and, and um, uh, right way to go. In terms of the open banking, I think an open API, let's say, consideration again, this was also in the past on our agenda, but I think what here is a kind of new opportunity to, to this point, um, which uh, Adam was um, uh, bringing, definitely the fact that the e-commerce has additional boost from this um, situation makes the, any solutions which are coming from the banking through this kind of open uh, API, open banking um, environment, which are around this e-commerce value chain from the longing into the financing of the purchase, 
obviously uh, will be getting even uh, even more important from this perspective. And obviously, this can be considered as this new use cases uh, or the use cases which will be even of the bigger focus than than, than they were uh, before. Mm -hmm. Yes, and actually, I read, I think, yesterday, like a very fresh news that Tatra Bank, uh, which is your network bank in Slovakia, also implemented this account aggregation within this PSD2 directive. So congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank you. This was really, really great work of both Patra and, uh, and the head of his team jointly. So so very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to continue this topic, maybe let me also uh, ask at once the question, um, do you think banks could benefit from partnering with digital challenger banks? Uh, such as mentioned Revolut or some other to deliver digital capabilities to customers. Maybe I will broad the question uh, about the cooperation with, with fintechs. So how can this make time to market of some solutions faster? Marek, maybe you. So I think, again, the topic of collaboration between banks and, and fintech is a kind of evergreen. And um, uh, again, I would I would put it even more broadly because we can speak about fintech, about challenger banks, and but also about any kind of technology vendors which are which are there to help us to build a value proposition for our clients. So I believe whatever is fitting into the value proposition of um, of us as a banking group and, and and particular network banks can which can be used for the benefit and for the value of the clients is is very much appreciated. Uh, wherever from it is uh, it is coming and looking from this perspective, we obviously aim at collaboration of the fintech partners as bringing the ready solutions. Uh, to our, uh, let's say, digital suite is also very much helping us to be quicker quicker on the market. Obviously, we have to remember that whatever we are bringing needs to meet our uh, requirements, needs to meet our security standards, and in the end needs to allow us for the far, fast um, uh, integration. So this integration effort is always on our side, but I have to be also on the uh, on the partner on the or the vendor side. So looking from the pure technology perspective, I see this collaboration very much, let's say, um, positive and uh, growing. And looking from the broader perspective uh, of the collaboration with the challenger banks, I don't know if this is if this is needed. I think we have enough, let's say, solutions and enough um, possibilities around to really build uh, good value propositions out of the technology components which we develop or which we purchase to be a kind of good sparring partners for them on the market. Yes, yes, thanks. Ada, would you comment from your side? Yep, uh, I agree with, with Mark, basically. Uh, so the first thing that we that we can benefit as a bank from uh, challenger banks or fintech companies, of course, we can learn from them a lot how to bring the, the good UX, user experience, UI for our customers to bring their uh, different because they they are serving to our customers different ways. They are they are building specific stuff with the dedicated functions, smaller functions, not so broad like the bank, but with the very very superb uh, value. And we can uh, of course learn from them a lot how to how to bring the best uh, the best value possible. And you know, I'm I'm really I'm really sure that we that we can adapt uh, fast. We can learn from them as well. And and this, this is one thing. Another thing, uh, these uh, smaller companies, fintechs or whatever, uh, they are good in specific functions delivery, like video verification that was mentioned some time ago uh, by Piotr. Uh, but uh, for example, we collaborate with uh, Twisto. So this is a company from uh, Czechia. Uh, that uh, regarding e-commerce services that helps us in e-commerce services. So they offer uh, basically uh, buy now, pay later stuff, not in the traditional way, uh, but more like a, like a, maybe not loan, but some some kind of loan basically. So we are partner we are partners in the specific uh, specific topic like uh, e-commerce uh, functions so this is as well some some additional uh, point to, to to interact and we can both sides can benefit from that of course uh, we uh, can provide customers uh, we we provide sales ch uh, channels for example for twisto and twisto uh, can benefit of course 
uh, from us uh, from uh, from us as well, and we can benefit from Twisto because this is addi addi additional uh, additional specific service dedicated to this kind of, uh, of of customers that we as a bank we we didn't deliver earlier, and they are quite uh, quite far away with the delivery, quite far with the thinking. That we can uh, we can benefit uh, from them. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I will hear it just uh, one comment from Andy. Maybe you, Adam, will uh, please comment um, how it looks like in ING. So that the comment is that P2P lenders are already the digital end to end, uh, uh, and uh, how this COVID situation can uh, conventional banks transform to pure digital, so that the conventional banks still require face to face activities for loan process. Uh, I think that in ING you have all the process even for lending available uh, digitally. Yeah, Could you just yeah, yeah. the comment? So, maybe conventional banks, yes, we ING, so this is not conventional bank. Uh, we can provide, we provide easy lending uh, uh, capabilities to ING uh, SME Midcorp customers. Uh, so this is purely digital uh, with using of uh, ing business channel clients can uh, take a, can take a loan uh, of course this is not for new clients that we don't know uh, anything about them this is for customers that have some relationship with us for some time but basically this is uh, this is uh, purely purely digital so this is more like discussion what the adoption of the risk of the of, of the risk appetite that we have uh, so this is this is more this is more like that. Of course, we can give uh, one hundred percent loan to, to to digital channel, but we must be sure that this is safe loan. Uh, so regardless the channel, uh, more, more important is the risk appetite and how can we be sure as a bank as a, as institution uh, that this, uh, this this is safe uh, safe lending uh, and that, and the customer is, uh, yeah, is will will give us money back basically. Yeah, 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 thank you. Uh, Piotr, uh, would you comment uh, on the previous questions? And don't, so I have another one for you. So here we have a question about the financial literacy. So does it impact on digitalization? What do you think of that? Should uh, IT companies or banks uh, uh, teach uh, somehow um, consumers or even business customers to use digital channels? What do you think of that? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I would like to start with open banking, if I may. Uh, I would like to put a word on that. So open banking actually can be a case in COVID times because let's imagine that we have a client who has accounts in three banks and now all of the branches are closed. So thanks to the open banking, he can he's able to aggregate all the accounts, but he will aggregate it in the most technologically advanced bank from all of these three. So this bank will win because the client will be uh, logging to see all of the accounts only to this bank. And this bank can be able to upsell something or cross sell something to this customer. So this can be a very important case during the, the pandemic and uh, during the times that branches are not accessible. And regarding uh, financial literacy, I think that uh, we should educate, we as a bank, as a financial industry, uh, we should educate uh, customers even if it's no COVID situation, because it's very important to, for example, uh, get to know uh, Customers, what is the what is the cash flow of the company? Because some of them uh, obviously doesn't know it, and uh, if they do, then there is a uh, then we have a more safe client and uh, the, the client which is which is aware of the of all all of the risks like running out of cash in the company, or uh, or he will be he will be more aware when to look for a, for a loan or other financing uh, products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Maybe Adam and, and uh, Marek, would you comment shortly also how do you educate your customers and if it is needed to, to, to switch them to the digital channels? 
Yeah, so I may I may start. You know, definitely it is required to to let's say spend enough time to educate the clients to promote the remote channels. And I think we were doing this before. We are doing this also right now. I think this um, whole situation is uh, on the other hand also helping to to some extent, obviously, uh, in this situation because. You can have a kind of classroom trainings, but until you do and have a kind of on the job uh, training, this is completely different on, or have a kind of theory and the practice. And looking from this perspective, I think there was always a lot of materials. There was a lot of, a, a lot of education efforts from the banks to promote, to educate how to use the um, uh, remote channels also in a secured way, looking from this perspective, if, if the security was a, a worry of the clients. Uh, but I think this situation is somehow, uh, let's say, making the clients face that they need to use it. And looking from this perspective, they can use this knowledge and this education in practice. And I think this combination is currently very important one to keep educating, having the possibility that the clients will actually really use it and then perhaps get used to and, and, and use these channels even more broadly than it was ever before. Yeah, so we are we are in the same situation. So, like I like I said a few times, uh, we start this digital digital digitization journey a lot of time ago, and part of the clients are really willing to use it because there are there are early adopters. They prefer to use digital channels. They don't uh, see uh, the benefit of um, uh, they didn't see benefit of uh, meeting uh, meeting person in life, in branch, they, they, they benefit from use digital channels before epidemic situation. And we, we were pushing a lot, a lot of more and putting a lot of more materials and uh, possibilities into ING business channel. And right now, after epidemic came out, uh, we parallelly started to once again start a new campaign. Um, this is uh, called ING business, more than you think. Um, a campaign uh, where we uh, where we where we uh, where we giving more and more information to our customers regarding ING business capabilities. So uh, we are pushing our customers to discover functions that are there, functions that they can that they can use from ING business channel and any other channels that we have in bank. Uh, that they that basically they can do nearly everything uh, through online banking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So the next question, I will also combine several, and it was it concerns the customer's behavior. I think that uh, so several questions appeared that at the beginning of the crisis, a lot of many uh, in many countries ITMs were cashed out, so many of the customers withdraw the cash. And uh, the next question is: Is the replacement of ITM uh, with uh, possible with using digital currency or maybe I would say at here maybe the, the promotion actually of cashless payments so, yeah, so, 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 no, so looking from this perspective yeah obviously this this is or this was visible uh, on one hand we, we could all face it in in TV this queues to queues to the banks to the to the ATMs and um, second we could see this in the figures in a, in a lot of um, in a lot of countries. I think there are like two drivers, and and uh, we need to consider like what was the motivation of this of this behavior. And I think still like having the cash in hands is a kind of um, uh, synonym of kind of security that no matter what I'm secured because I have my savings, let's say, uh, somehow with me. Uh, obviously, the banking sector is like needs to provide the security, this kind of comfort of security to the to the uh, clients, and I think. We are doing a really good job in this regards. Uh, I can I can speak on behalf of the uh, of the RBI. Still, a lot of clients across a lot of banks just wanted to feel secure, and I think this is this is this was one of the motivators. The second, uh, we need to also distinguish that we uh, in the C we operate in the kind of multi currency environment uh, when the core currency rates was also quite um, influenced with this pandemic situation. And therefore, also all the foreign currencies uh, were, let's say, a, a kind of run for in terms of the clients who wanted to secure that due to this fluctuation of the um, exchange rates, they will not, let's say, lose their uh, lose their savings. So I think 
looking from both uh, perspectives, there could be the drivers. And um, if this is so, I don't know if, if we can all like fully answer to, to them with this um, cashless payment. But nevertheless, obviously, we try to make all the payments uh, for our clients as digital, as secure, and as easy as uh, and convenient as as possible. So I think that whoever has experience or was used to have a kind of more cash, uh, let's say, uh, behaviors or uh, physical, let's say, transfer of the of the uh, cash now is for sure quickly shifting to the to the uh, like digital. Uh, process. But looking, like I said, from the behavioral perspective, I think it, it would be um, uh, quite interesting to, 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 to understand what was behind it. it was it the, the sense of insecurity with the, uh, with the banking sector or there were some other drivers which were, which were behind? Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Adam, what was it the case in NINJ uh, Bank? Yeah, we saw, of course, uh, a lot of pressure on our ATMs, uh, new branches, uh, mostly uh, the start of the crisis uh, after some information came uh, came out that there will be some uh, stay in home and uh, politic, political situation or, or politic policy, sorry, policy in our country. And we uh, we saw some run on the bank, but I think all the banks uh, and our national bank as well, uh, they are they, they provided their best. Uh, the most of the ATMs uh, uh, weren't run of the money, so m maybe on the most uh, crowded places, etc. This kind of stuff. So, but I think this was this was maybe not only, but uh, this was mo most of the situation with the first few weeks. Uh, and looking back. Uh, this whole communication that hey maybe cash is not so is not so good when we have this epidemic situation when we need to exchange when we need to limit touching ourselves we need to limit to touch uh, any 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 objects uh, so maybe let's start to use uh, uh, to use cards maybe let's start to use uh, touchless uh, payments etc I think this a little bit smaller uh, this run on the ATMs run on cash. Uh, so we as a bank, we in Poland, we, we, um, we promote cashless payments, we promote cards payments, we promote all the digital uh, exchange um, of money from, uh, from a lot of years. And I think this epidemic situation, like a digi digitization processes uh, of, uh, se of selling and service of banking products uh, and serving to our customers, will as well help uh, to, to move more and more uh, to, to digital world from cash. Yeah. And so then I, if I may add to, to, to this, sorry, one more statement that we also need to take a look that in time we have also seen a growth of the digital payments. So the card payments, the, um, the contactless payments and so on. So I think, again, to, 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 to this uh, Adam's point, the fact that all the efforts which we have done for the card solution for the uh, wallet like RiPay, uh, are very much we are very much benefiting this um, uh, from this uh, later on also our clients uh, because in time when the clients have uh, let's say quickly thought through that okay the situation is secured it's stable in time it's mu it's much more healthy and much better to pay uh, contactless pay by card they are really using this um, even more than ever before so looking from this perspective not only this run is quite important but also what was in the second step in terms of the digital payments I think it's it's equally important as outcome of the situation mm -hmm. yes yes and actually you know shops also are less willing to accept cash right now so uh, this is also a push so the I think that this will be the last question um and it is concerns of the legacies of the question from Hana regarding turn to market results. What are the banks doing with the slow legacy to digital integration process? So, Marek, uh, maybe we'll, um, please start, then Adam, and then Piotr also, please comment on this as well. Yeah, so, so I can only say that we are really progressively modernizing the, the integration layer and as this was also mentioned at, at one of the points uh, really we are building currently the old integrations la integration layers in the most modern uh, with the most modern architecture with, with the most modern technology in order to let's say do not face 
uh, similar challenges um, uh, in the future. And, and as I said, this was already before, but definitely in in current situation, want or aiming at at short term to market, uh, we are very much focusing um, uh, into it. So so from the I would say architecture through the technology and actually really putting enough resources in the in the build up of the integration layers. This is this is like I would say the shortest answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, so legacy was there, will be there. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I'll turn off video. So yeah, we still yeah, sorry. So legacy was there, legacy uh, systems will be there, uh, regardless if we have, uh, if we have, uh, let's say, the current situation or we, we, we was uh, uh, half a year before. Uh, so we need to modern, mo modern uh, so we need to provide modern, more modern uh, applications, more modern back office applications, um, et cetera, from time to time. And I think, like Marek uh, mentioned, this will speed up the whole process that we already have um, uh, with uh, within the banks. Uh, so from time to time, of course, uh, we need to pro we need to start new project of rebuilding some stuff. But I think the best possible way is to redevelop uh, applications um, uh, step by step, and not wait to some big boom to big projects, but to be uh, be the, the the best possible way is to modernize uh, uh, modern uh, this kind of applications uh, basically on a daily basis. Thanks, Piotr. Are you with us? Because I don't see your video right now. Yes, I am. Yeah, you're good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Please, yes. yeah. Yeah. Video. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, we as a software provider, we are ready to join new and legacy technology. The integration is possible and there are a couple of solutions to provide customers such an integration that customer will not be able even to differentiate is, if is he using a new or old system. And sometimes legacy systems has very wide product portfolio coverage and Sometimes it's easier and even more reasonable to upgrade the technology and add missing features, like uh, if there is a need on the market to digitalize the the, the trade finance or, or any additional module, then uh, it's easier to, to add it and join with the, with the legacy system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So just let me check if we uh, have some, I think we answered it uh all the questions here uh just a second there was actually the question about the trade finance so how is it possible to check all the documents uh online but i think um adam if you can comment this i know that ing has this functionality but actually this is worse of a separate webinar so if you can yeah. give a really short comment I here I am not a specialist in trade finance processes, but I think blockchain helps us a lot. Uh, this, this this blockchain technology, with with uh, within this whole uh, managing of all process of delivering guarantee of letters of credits uh, regarding trade finance uh, products. So I think this is this is possible, and ING is doing that is doing that as well. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not, you know, specialist in this area. So maybe I can, uh, I can send. Uh, I don't see who asked the question, but ing.com uh, and another uh, news uh, can be can be helpful as well. So this can, this is possible for sure. Yes, yes, we will be actually uh, delivering some information on this because uh, this is now the trade finance topic and receivable finance uh, topic and digitalization of this area is also very uh, interesting topic. Uh, so yeah, and, we and, we see, and we see that electronic warranties is uh, a lot, a lot number of numbers of that provided by customers is a lot higher that was before, previous, uh, before epidemic. Uh, so, so I think this is uh, this is the, the 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 topic to cover. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. So we have covered actually all the questions. Maybe uh, one short uh, summary from each of you uh, to to close the meeting. So actually, uh, what is your what is the prediction? And uh, so I think that now everything that can move online will actually move online. Um, 
what are your, what are your thoughts on that? And just just a short short summary of today's talks. Adam, shall we start with you? Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> the thought. Uh, yes, basically yes. It's looking from from the digital capabilities, looking from learning perspective, learning from looking from banking perspective. I think what even what, what everything. Uh, what is possible, and even what we don't think right now that it is possible to uh, to 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 be covered online is going online. I, I saw uh, that buying the uh, buying cars is possible right now, so uh, uh, as well online. I think few few months ago, few few years ago, that I'd say someone maybe uh, looking for a new car is going to buy a car from the e-shop of some specific uh, specific car company. But right now, this is this is possible. So I think more and more features, more and more products will go online. This is a matter of tool. This is a matter of uh, customer's behavior, of security, of course, that was mentioned a few times uh, as well. But but yeah, this is this is the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Marek. Your summary. So, you know, first I would like to wish everyone that that, that we stay healthy. Second, uh, I would wish everyone that we will back to normal. Uh, and the question will be if this will be the old no normal or the new normal. And and uh, my bet will be that that this will be the new normal, which we need to somehow a bit you know reimagine uh, in terms of the possibilities and and so what we will do. Actually, this is, uh, like I said before, this is about like few horizons. So we need to act currently short term, mid term, but we need to think about the longer term uh, perspective. And this is exactly what we are now uh, undertaking within the RBI. So we tried now to build a hypothesis on what will be this new normal in terms of the client's behaviors, in terms of the new requirements towards the banking. Uh, and towards the RBI uh, banks specifically, and how this translates into specific solutions and the value which we'll be uh, delivering to, to our clients. Like I said, for sure, all the di new digital, let's say, solutions and new di digital uh, capabilities being built, this will be a kind of no regret. But obviously, in the end, there have to be value for the customers that are coming out of it. So it's not only to add new additional channels or new additional features, but actually to make a good value proposition out of it and something which will be actually really useful for the clients answering to the very specific uh, problem. So this is this is um, very much to this that we first need to understand what the clients will need from this new normality and or new, new normal situation and how the banks can uh, can answer. But I think we will surprise ourselves still with a lot of um, uh, digital solutions which we can provide and also to, to help our clients and integrate with the businesses. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And Piotr, a word to you. Thank you. So I agree with Marek that after the COVID we will have a new normal and the landscape after the crisis will be, will be definitely different. Uh, for banks, uh, I think that they will be less physical and more digital, for sure. And many branches after the crisis will stay closed, only the strategic ones will survive, in my opinion. Um, since the epidemic will last longer than it was previously expected, customers will have more time to completely change their habits and maybe to switch to digital channels in 100%. And that's why user experience of banking application will play a significant role on the market. And mobile or desktop channels will be the first point of touch for bank. And we need to remember it uh, like in banks and uh, as an IT vendors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So, Piotr, Adam, and Mara, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you, our attendees, for staying with us for an hour already. Thank so, thanks, thanks a lot. And uh, I'm closing the meeting, the webinar, and goodbye. See you next time online. Thank you. Bye. Bye.